Um, if you were born on January 4th, you were probably conceived on April 13th, just so you know. Hmm. That's a fun fact for you. Very interesting. Um, you know what the biggest movie quote was? It was started in January of 1991. Biggest movie quote of that year. Hello, Clarice. Oh, nice. Very nice. <laughs> so that's 91. 91. Biggest sex symbol? Patrick Swayze. And Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Swayze, he was the he was the man. For us it was El McPherson. For the oh, ladies yeah. it was Patrick Swayze. El McPherson was for both. I didn't ever really like her. I did. Come Biggest on. comedian of the day. The funniest man in the world in nineteen ninety one. Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> man that guy caused controversy didn't he he was the biggest comic of the day one of the richest stand-up comics of all time he's very good with money uh you should really follow him on instagram his shit that he posts is so fucking funny because it's just his day-to-day stuff someone have told me that. oh my god it's fucking funny some of the movies from 1991 that that were released like in and around like this is all in January not necessarily today but in January yeah fried fried green tomatoes still never seen it boys in the hood nice and city slickers <laughs> huge <laughs> three movies. drastically different movies eh and but yeah they used to make different movies original movies those are three very original movies mm-hmm. and that's very very cool Wow. Uh, they don't make original movies anymore. You kids, you're missing out. They used to like just like write scripts. Oh my god. Anyway, they would write scripts and then that's what movies were based on. They weren't based on old movies. Yeah. Uh, so it was weird. a weird it was a weird time. Uh big scandals of this month. 1991, Paul Pee Wee Herman Rubens is caught <laughs> in an adult theater doing an inappropriate act. That's so amazing. <laughs> I just read that now. That is awesome. I still, I, I didn't even at the time, I thought, I don't get it. Why is this a big deal? So he was jerking off in a jerk off theater. Who cares? Yeah. Well, because he was a, he had a kid's show at the time and it's weird. Was it really a kid's show though? I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. If you watch it today, I don't know who that show was for. Like I barely remember it, but I've seen newer ones. Like I've, I've seen it since and it was. It's just fucked up. That show freaked me out when it was when I was younger when it came out, man. That show was just weird. I just think like, my my friends were into it. And I just I don't know, man. The show was just fucking weird. Uh, Super Nintendo, which oh, I I was quoted at the time as saying they will never come out with anything cooler than this. This is <laughs> the best video games we'll ever get. Actual quote by me. I don't they, think you were off. <laughs> there's no, there's no way they can top Super Nintendo. I like couldn't even foresee the N64 in in those days. Uh, One hundred ninety nine ninety eight was its sale price. Wow, that's big money in ninety one. Fuck, that's what my parents paid for that. That's crazy. Never had one. I did. I had the original <laughs> Nintendo three years after everybody else did, and I went from that to the PlayStation One. And, and I, I think that was the last game. system I bought. Um, so ninety, I'm going to stick on ninety one. Big things happened in like it was a huge world changing fucking year. Operation Desert Storm started. That's oh, crazy. that was the first Iraq War. You guys don't remember that? I was in grade seven. It was pretty nice. Remember that? Yep. That was the first. Crazy. The first war. That was televised ever, like live and, TV in and real man, time. Was it ever? Uh, Hoping on the news and just watching the light shows. Fuck, that was a crazy time. We had never seen anything like it. And looking at those videos now, they're all shitty and <laughs> like grainy, and we're like, what the hell? Because now they just got the ca- cameras on smart bombs. You could see them go right up the guy's ass before they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but back then that was like high tech shit and that was the first time we had like reporters embedded like now it's just commonplace 
we expect yeah. them to be embedded, but th- at the time it was fucking crazy. Like, what are you doing? You can't go to a warrior and reporter. <laughs> now you're not allowed to have a war without a reporter. And well, most of them, well, it, they're just gonna lie and say they were there anyway. So, <laughs> um, back to the music. 1989. Oh yeah, so that was the there was no best artist. Um, Wind beneath my wings. 1990s big Grammy hit. Oh wow, Grammy's really? Always in January. Yeah, you are the wind beneath. Brand new artists in the pop world. I love this. Delight. <laughs> Black Crows. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. Wow. Vanilla Ice. Wilson Phillips. MC Hammer. And Faith No More. Oh, wow. Eh? Epic came out January 1990. Fuck. And that is such a good album. The big one hit wonders from that year. Faith No More. <laughs> <laughs> Sinead O'Connor. Concrete Blonde. And the Macarena. No, that was 91. Sorry. Concrete Blonde? Concrete Blonde with the song Joey. Oh. 1990s big <clears throat> Pump Up the Jam was the big dance hit. Followed by You Can't Touch This. <laughs> do, 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 do. And my... Do, do. My favorite, NKOTB, put out Step by Step. <laughs> Gord's What's favorite up? came out that year, Digital Underground's Humpty Dance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the shit. <laughs> when I bought that album, I remember just thinking, like, ah, oh, it's just going to be an album full of really funny random stuff. That album, that it, it was on the album called Sex Packet. That whole album was just all about fucking. <laughs> and it wasn't uh, very quiet about it <laughs> like you it didn't was, have to like, you know what the porn you know what the biggest rock song was at the time unskinny bop <laughs> guess what that was about poison fucking hell <laughs> the unskinny bop 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 <laughs> blow you away when that album came out when that song first came out i remember because at that point like i was a bit of a poison fan before that and i'm always going to have a soft spot for that band but it was at that point where I was getting into a little more aggressive, heavier stuff. And uh, I remember like making fun of, uh, cause the band I was in um, the older brothers from two of the members, they had a, a hair metal style band, but they were right into like to the warrant and the poisons. They were all into that style. We were more, yeah. the, we, we weren't. And uh, <laughs> it was so funny. Cause it was like, Oh man, CC DeVille's amazing. I'm like, Hey, don't they have a fucking new song that like just came out? He's like, oh man, I already got the fucking, I already got the single, and he plays it. And listening to it, I'm running probably through a do 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 do. I literally just learned the entire song just like that. Your band is basic. Move away. <laughs> yeah, I there was a few crossovers that I allowed into my life. Like Queen's Reich was one. Oh my god, silent. Um, uh, Skid Row, obviously. Love Skid Row. They were a big crossover for me. Um, I just read an article about them, and, and uh, I'll remember you. What a big fucking deal that song was. It was like one of the biggest ballads of all time. Oh, yeah, it was huge. Remember yesterday. I love that song. I like that album. That was a good make-out album. It was make-out. A, uh, they released some good stuff. S- side one of the tape. There was, I had like my go-tos were that Skid Row, the first album. Um, uh, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion 1. If you can make out for a whole, the whole side one of that tape, that was pretty kick-ass. Yeah. Um, and my other one, and I don't care what you guys say, because people touched my penis, was Roxette. Roxette uh, was amazing. What was the name of the album? Not the one with the look, the one that came out after that. That I'd like listen to, to you, listen to your heart. Like, um, what was the big song listen, on that? Listen no, it wasn't Listen to Your Heart. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought they only had the two big ones. Joyride. Yeah, I can't remember. That's the one. Come and join the joyride. Ah, uh, yeah. Side one of that album got your penis touched. <laughs> you know, I um, I'm not going to explain to you, young kids, what the sides of the tapes were. That's way too more. It's way over your heads. But uh, <laughs> I'm it not was, getting into all that. It was a thing. Um, I remember years ago. 
um, when I was in that same band, we went and saw Skid Row and Pantera with the uh, Killer Dwarves opening up. Oh, Jesus, that's awesome. It was an amazing show. And the best thing was, was there our, uh, the lead singer of our band, he is, he had never been to a concert before in his life. And Skid Row, like Sebastian Bach specifically, was like his idol. He dreamed of being Sebastian Bach. And um, I did not. I dreamed of singing like Sebastian Bach. I didn't want to be him. He looked way too much like a girl. No, he wanted to, you know, he, he wanted to be Sebastian Bach without a doubt. Um, what was funny man, was, but you look yeah, like good a looking girl. guy. Yeah. Not so much anymore, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's still um, got it. He has, he's, he's not as bad as Axel. Go look at Axel. No, right Axel's now. brutal. No. At least Sebastian Bach's still skinny. Um, but what was funny was, is that where we're at the show, um, when, once Skid Row finally came out, you know, Alex lost his shit entirely and he just started freaking out. So in the stadium and he turned around behind me and he just, cause he just had all this, didn't know what to do with himself sort of thing. Cause we we're in the stand. So we weren't like in a pit or anything else. And he just turned around and grabbed the seat behind him and started and just ripped the seat right off yeah. and broke it. And everybody around us ended up causing a near riot and they destroyed an entire section of seating all because of started with Alex <laughs> and Alex walked out with that seat for the record. <laughs> we did that in our lady P show right here in beautiful downtown Kelowna That's awesome. where you, we weren't allowed to have concerts, but they thought it was a religious group because they were called our lady <laughs> P. So they allowed it <laughs> tripping Daisy open for them. It was awesome. And we destroyed, I think Nori Wentworth famously of Wentworth music now three stores in the Okanagan. Um, Still has part of the seats from that, from the Kelowna oh, Community awesome. Theater. Very neat. Um, oh, oh, hang on. I just remembered something. Um, the guitarist from Children of Bottom, uh, very well known and a popular or, or a, a well recognized band for what they did for music and their style. Um, the. Uh, um, the lead singer and guitarist, um, Alexi Leaho, um, died at age 41 earlier today. Crazy. So it's very, very sad news. The community is very sad. He was a really, really genuinely nice guy. Um, he's been dealing with, uh, some sort of, uh, um, sickness for the last few years. Um, which is why they ended up stop, uh, last, they disbanded in 2019. Um, that was strictly because of, of his uh, his health. So sad news on that one. Uh, so Children of Bottom, uh, phenomenal fucking band. But yeah, poor bastard's dead. So sad news. Sure. Look at that. Sorry about that. Had to bring <laughs> a little bit, of, a little bit of sadness to the fucking show there. I'm not that sad. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Doesn't. <laughs> not so much. Sorry. <laughs> Not so much. No, yeah, doesn't bother me at all. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, fuck. So yeah, so that happened. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's just. Um... So you know that you heard about the bomb that went off in Nashville on Christmas Day? Uh, yeah, three three people died of COVID because of it. Yeah, that's the one. Um. Do you not find it strange? I mean, I mean, no. I mean, you don't find it strange. Of course, you know, why, why would you? Um, very little news coverage on this for yeah, some no strange one, reason. All, I know three people died all of COVID because the bomb went off and they were around it. Yeah. And the big thing is that, um, well, they, they, they know who did it and it's a white guy. And ironically, they're not talking about that. And the weirdest thing is, is they are not calling it um, homegrown terrorism. Yeah, no, they won't. <laughs> that would distract us from COVID. We can't have yeah. that right now. <laughs> so that's weird. But um, yeah. So I just thought that was a yeah, big thing on that one. Um, uh they're now claiming, I mean, one of the last things I heard, I was just try, I was trying to look up on this earlier, but my fucking computer froze. But they're now saying that they think that he was um, uh, some sort of um, a Muslim 
you know, part of that or something like that, claiming that he was uh, well, that's what they always say. Part of one of the ex- 